Jason Lee with Hollywood Unlocked and Censored. And Melissa, Melissa Ford, yes. Yeah, she's back and she's looking up and down our next Shut guest. your face. I've never met him before. Landon Brown. <laughs> very nice to meet it's you. It's very nice to meet you too. Hi. Oh, we're not going there today. Wait, leave me we're, alone. We're not going to talk about your vagina because we don't have the time. <laughs> no, but thank God. I wanted to um, call my friend Landon and I haven't, I've never interviewed Landon. I've never called Landon about an interview because I have friends that are in the industry and have going through real things that I'm just friends with and mm -hmm. we're real friends. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're right. How long uh, have you guys known each other? I'm just coming to probably, the party. Probably 10 years. Wow. Like that, yeah. Okay. About 10 years. Okay. Um, so Landon Brown, for those that don't know, is the son of Bobby Brown. Most people will recognize him when they see the video and the brother to Bobby Christina. Um, most people don't know, but when I got the news of Bobby Christina passing, I actually called Landon and Landon didn't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How he was are the you? first person, first person to tell me about it. Really? How, how are mm -hmm. you, um, how are you dealing with that? I know it's been some time now. Um. <laughs> it's still tough. You lose your sister, especially your baby sister. It's going to be difficult for anybody. But um, I got to spend five months in the hospital with her every single day. I got to be there to stretch her. I got to be there to do her nails, make sure she was groomed good. You know, I got to, I got to have my closure. Mm. Oh, so you were there every day. Mm. Oh, I didn't know that. So how? So when she was there, I know your aunt was very active. Um, I think it was your father's sister was very active now is she close with the family or is she estranged from the family we're all close we're you're all close. very close we just okay. all have a different way of approaching situations because you're very reserved very conservative very private very private you'll mm. share on your facebook but you're not one to do i don't think you've done an interview no so how is the family collectively working better now accepting that she's gone or is there still some disagreement on that on how it all happened um I feel like we all we've all found a way to to wear it. You know, you can't get over it. There's no getting over it. It is what it is, mm -hmm. and we found a way to live within that to be able to accept that she's not here physically, mm -hmm. and you know, we still love her and we miss her. But this is just what it is. What um, did you have any sort of relationship with uh, with Nick Gordon and? You know, what are your feelings on him? Because there's a lot of controversy and mystery shrouded around this guy and his relationship with, with Bobby Christina and his possible participation in her death. <sighs> Loaded question. Sorry. <laughs> Three-parter. That is awkward. I, um, I got to spend a little bit of time with Nick. Um, I went to the hotel one night to visit with my sister and my mom. And this guy was there, stranger. Mm -hmm. So to me, anybody within their circle at the time or anyone new that I, I've never heard of, I've never seen before, they are just the enemy right when I meet them. Mm -hmm, I need mm -hmm. to know who you are now because as far as I'm concerned, you are here to just eat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you're not doing mm -hmm. nothing. You're not working. You're not doing anything. You're mm -hmm. just here to feed your leech. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I spoke to him. I asked him, you know, who are you? You know, what's going on? Oh, you know, she's... She's being my mom, and I was like, well, man, well, like, what happened to you? Mm -hmm. Oh, my mother abandoned me. Mm -hmm. I, I felt bad. I felt, I felt kind of ashamed of myself for being so rude to this young man. She, she abandoned you. Mm -hmm. How old were you? I was like, man, I was like 18. And I was like, man, <laughs> come on. At 18, on, you, you can move out now. You're 18 right. years old, your mama, don't do this to me right now. Right, right. And he said, I had to replace you as Chrissy's brother because you're not here. Did she, he said that to you? And he said that. And I almost lost my entire mind until Whitney decided to jump in. She decided that she needed to check him. So so wow. to Whitney, most people don't know in the, the audience that, um, so I did the event with Kelly Price. It mm -hmm. was Whitney's last event. Whitney mm -hmm. was there, publicly performed, walked the red carpet, passed away, unfortunately, two days later. Very random. I mean, having been with her that week and seen her and all the energy, it was really crazy. Mm -hmm. So now the claims that are coming out well, first of all, and then almost, was it two years later, Bobby Christina? About that. Was in the same exact situation mm -hmm. as Whitney. Mm -hmm. Red flags went off for me. Yeah. Um, do you believe that Nick has something to do with the death of your sister and Whitney or both? I would say um, if me and this beautiful woman right here were in a relationship and something happened to her and I was the only one there that 
I would have some responsibility in that. Mm -hmm. So has, cause I saw the interview he did with Dr. Phil where it was like, I don't know if you saw it, but it was crazy. It, it was good. like a psychotic person. For I real. saw bits of it. It was psychotic. It. Um, and it, this was the first interview. Um, and it, it was almost like, he had decided to do it to make himself look good, but knew he was so <laughs> conflicted with what he did that he didn't know how to do it. Yeah. Um, plus he's a couple chromosomes short, short. of being intelligent. Okay. Um, <laughs> your father just came out with a book, Every Little Step, it's controversial. Everybody's talking about a couple things. So the first thing um, is, is that he talks about having sex with a ghost. Have you heard about that? You know. <laughs> and have you ever had sex with a ghost? <laughs> I'm not sure, man. I woke up plenty <laughs> nights and couldn't move, so I'm not sure. Maybe the ghost of uh, your sexual may be, past may was holding you down. <laughs> but okay. the place he's talking about, though, the mansion that he's talking about, everyone in our family thought that that mansion was haunted. Okay. It With was a spirits. very creepy place, yeah. It was weird. Did you think it was haunted? Yes, I thought it was haunted. Did you have a ghost encounter? I, I wouldn't say I had a ghost encounter, but I was spooked all the time. Okay. He went on to say... From what I've heard, that he that Whitney was struggling from a loss of a relationship with another woman, that has sparked controversy all over Sissy Houston. Is pissed. People feel like it was outing Whitney, or in a way of kind of putting out there her private business and she not being here to defend herself. What do you think about that? I think that if you really feel someone is great and you really love them, then let them rest. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, this, the whole media thing where everybody gets to be in everyone's business and no one gets to have their privacy, especially after they've passed. Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's, it's just kind of ridiculous to me. So do you think it should even been included in the book? I think my father wrote a book that he felt he should write and whatever he said, he felt like he should say. Mm -hmm. And you're still close to your dad. Yeah. I don't know if there's video of them back when um, back when he was young, young and like him and Bobby, like their relationship is for anybody like me who didn't have a father active in their life. It was like, damn, you know, like they had a really close bond. So it's good to see that you guys are both still really close. Yeah. Are you close to his wife right now, his current wife and the and your she's really good people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And your and she's step siblings. About, she's about to have another baby. Yeah. My yeah. little brother, my little sister and my sibling on the way. Yeah. So. I watched the interview um, with Robin Roberts and it made me like Bobby Brown a lot. You know, I mean. You didn't it, like him before? I wouldn't necessarily go on record and say I didn't like him. I was kind of indifferent. I flipped this interview now. You know that, right? Yeah, you did. You did. But that's okay. Don't worry about it. I'm used to it. I'm used to it. I'm used to being interrogated by this one, especially when it comes oh, to, you know, you and my I JJ. Both are used to being interrogated by this one. <laughs> We're not going to talk about those course interrogations. Course this is my friend and my family. I yes. mean, so from, you know, a, a viewer who has always been kind of intrigued by the saga, I've, you know, I came away with it kind of liking Bobby Brown a lot more and feeling like I, uh, feeling like I'm very happy for him that he gets a second chance at happiness. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not as critical about the things that he said in the book because, you know, unfortunately you share a truth with somebody and that somebody just isn't here anymore. So, you know, I just, I guess I'm just less, you know. And that I, I completely agree. That's exactly what I was, what I was trying yeah, to say. I mean, so, I yeah, I mean, right. I think it's amazing that he's finally using his voice because for many years people knew that Whitney had an alleged drug addiction before her relationship with Bobby and used him as the bad boy image to blame everything she ever did on him. So mm -hmm. it's good that he's finally talking. I mean, we've been around the industry for years. Um, you know, people know people, but I think that, um, it's definitely, it's definitely good to see that he's using his voice. There was something that I remember that happened that involved you that I never, ever asked you. Believe it or not, I don't, do I call, I don't get in your personal business. I don't call no. you now. Okay. Whitney's funeral. Mm -hmm. You and your dad and your family are there. Mm -hmm. There's been reports of what happened. You guys were asked to leave the funeral. There was a disruption. I don't know you to be a disruptive person. What happened when you got to the funeral? It was really confusing, actually. I'm, I wasn't sure what was going on. We walked to the front of the funeral, and, you know, we're all in a bad mood. And um, Bad mood because it's Whitney's funeral. Yeah. Like it Upset, was sad. Surprising. And, not angry. You know, when, when someone passes away, it's not real to you until you get there, and yeah. you're like, whoa. And that was massive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was impact. already just, like, frustrating to see so many people that didn't have a personal relationship with her 
sitting in, you know, such a That's the crazy event. thing about funerals of, of, you know, high profile, you know, entertainers is just the hangers on and the nobodies that just show up and literally want to take a selfie with the casket. Mm-hmm. It's, on the guest it, list. It's, for dis- the- it's disgusting. It's disgusting. So you get there, you go to the front. What happens? Yeah. So we're walking into the pew and a, a particular gentleman, I don't want to say his name. Do I'll you talk know to you name? about it later. You, well, you know, I'm going to come back and tell it. <laughs> A particular gentleman who um, is such a media whore, he um, was there and he like kicked his legs up into the pew when he saw me like I was going to hit him. Mm. I, I, I didn't understand what was going on. So I'm just, you know, I'm chilling. I got a suit on. Hat looks nice. I'm not about to do nothing. Out of people like, what are you doing? He put his legs literally up into the pew and like covered himself and my dad grabbed me. And I looked at my dad and I'm like, I'm, I'm chilling. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm good. I'm chill. Mm-hmm. So we sat down. It was that was weird to begin with, and we sat down. And they said, "Sir, this pew is for you. Your kids have to sit in the back. Or they got to stand up in the back." My father was like, "No, I'm not this. I'm not. My kids aren't going to stand right. up in the back." Wow. It should be a no-brainer. Right. Yeah. My wife's, my ex-wife or whatever, the mother of my child is there. My kids are here. It should be a no-brainer. Mm-hmm. And the police wouldn't even let me talk to my sister. That's awful. At the funeral. Mm. They said they would arrest me. When was the last time you talked to Bobby Christina before the incident happened in Atlanta? I um, I was trying so hard to get in touch with her over the phone. Getting in touch with her over the phone was just ridiculous. I'd either get the voicemail or I'd get Nick, you know, or I'd get her, and then Nick would get on the phone like she's busy. So I, I just stopped trying to call to call on that phone. I just tried my dad's phone or something or had my dad call, and I spoke to her um, while my dad was getting a haircut. She called him. I spoke to her, and she was being as silly as she always is. Then Nick got on the phone, of course, and was like, we got to go. So if you had a magic wand today and Nick Gordon could be in prison or walk in the streets, what would your wish be? <sighs> that's that's a difficult question, Jason. That's why I asked him. I wish, <laughs> I wish nothing, nothing negative on anybody. I mean, it's, it's not going to benefit me at the end of the day. My sister is gone. I couldn't prevent it. But do you wish the mystery was lifted as to his possible participation? You know, do you, do you wish for clarity? Of course. For yeah. the rest of my life, I wish for clarity. Mm. But, you know, I don't believe I'll, I'll get that. So I just have to live inside of this. I just have to be able to, to wear it. Reconcile. Mm. I understand. So with your father's book, how is he dealing with the reaction that he's getting? Have you talked to him as he said what he thinks about people's feedback on it? When when me and my dad talk about about business of any kind, it's very clear, clean and cut. This is what's going on, this is what's going on. Great. It's not emotional. About the book, if he and I are talking about parts of the book or stories from within the book or things I said, then then it's emotional. But about his book, he's just very excited that it's doing so well. Yeah, I'm I'm happy that it's out there, and I'm happy that he's like I said. I'm gonna read it. Isn't it like the number one bestseller right now? Yeah, and they have the new edition movie that's in production. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are you in that movie at all? No, no, you no, <laughs> no, not me. You not should personally. Be. Are you gonna be featured in the story? I don't know. Yeah, because I'm sure you were a badass kid. Were you a badass kid? No, oh, man, I you was. Were good. I was Same shy chill. and quiet. Mm. Yeah, Thank he you. seems pretty even keel. I'm not even going to deal with what your assessment of Landon Brown is right, Brown is right now. Okay. Anyways, unfortunately, we have to wrap up the show. You have to stop flirting with all our guests. I am not flirting. Okay, I'm, stop I'm, calling I'm, me welcome. out. It is very welcome. <laughs> I'm really, is very I'm really welcome. scared to see what's going to happen when we turn that camera off. Anyways, <laughs> thanks for joining us on Hollywood Unlocked, Uncensored. Landon Brown. Landon Brown. Thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate you. And thank you all for joining us today. Bye.